We're grateful to be here today to come together in worship, praise, joy, learning, and loving. And we thank you for all the blessings that we enjoy in our country and our society, the freedoms we enjoy. And we, we take as part of our freedom in our way, the freedom to create our world, the freedom to affect others around us, the freedom to choose how we react to the issues of each day in each moment. And in that, Lord, we ask for your guidance. We ask that you guide us in the ways of the Christ within us to help us each moment to further the teachings of the Jesus Christ within us in all our actions and words and thoughts to extend that all can love each other in this world. Amen. Well, are we ready for some music? Oh, I, I have one thing to say first. Welcome to all of our online audience. Good, to, good for y'all to be here. And you'll know you're with us if you feel a slight pull at the corners of your mouth, then you'll know you're with us in this moment, no matter what time you're watching. Thank you for being here. Okay, that never gets old. It just, I, it just never gets old. <laughs> okay, um, are we, America the Beautiful? Oh great, oh great. <laughs> For amber waves of gray, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain, America, America. Together, we'll affirm Unity's foundational principle, there is only one power, 
one presence, active in the universe and in my life, God the good omnipotent. And when we embody these tenets in our heart, we are a thriving spiritual community here to inspire one another to realize God's love. Centered in the Spirit of God, we seek peace, love, and abundance in an awakening world. And the daily word today is beautiful. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. Let's, let's recite together. My open heart discovers beauty all around me. Yeah, there's a, there, there's a little magic everywhere. Yeah. My open heart discovers beauty all around me. I see beauty soaring, I see beauty in soaring mountains and rolling seas in majestic forests and kaleidoscopic fields of wildflowers. I hear beauty in music, bird songs, and the laughter and conversations of people in fellowship. Searching beyond my senses, I discover greater depth of beauty. The mundane items and landmarks I may take for granted take on a deeper beauty when my memories fill them with meaning. My dear ones become even more beautiful to me when I pause to remember our fondest experience and the love that binds us. I move through each day with my mind and heart open. Now even the most ordinary items, places, and circumstances become more and more precious and beautiful to me. And the scripture for today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image. I have a hard time getting a hold of that, but maybe later on I'll go back to it and see you know, how it reveals itself. Okay, we ready for... Here we go. What a wonderful... Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a great song. I know. It is a wonderful world. 
especially when you're in here looking out. Oh, summertime. So July just started the month of divine understanding, represented by the disciple Thomas. I've always related to Thomas, the doubting Thomas. He was the one that said, I don't believe you. Show me your scars, Jesus. He didn't even believe Jesus. I can relate to that. And that's OK to question. Because when you do and you sit in the question, God fills in the answers. It's OK to question. So this morning in meditation, I would like us to go within as I read the prayer of the woman of the chalice that represents the power of divine understanding, Mary of Magdalene. And Mary of Magdalene had an extraordinary understanding of Jesus' teachings and of why he was here at the time he was. And she knew um, how to allow those teachings to saturate her and then put that out into the world. And that's a beautiful gift, and that's the power that we're going to focus on this month of being that reflection, being that reflection of divine understanding. So I invite you to get very comfortable in your chairs. For those of you watching on Facebook and out there, relax and enjoy. If you're new to meditation, this is an opportunity to just let go, to become fully released of all of that noise out there, all of that that you might have brought in with you to this sacred space. Any worries, any doubts, any fears, just let all of that go. This is your time with God. So take in some nice, deep, cleansing breaths. Feel within your body if there's any tense spaces, tightness. Just focus on those areas for a bit, and they will release. And prepare to go deeply within, and allow your inner senses, those that perceive the voice of God, the sense of God, the love of God, allow those senses to come to life as you relax fully and deeply. And breathe. Focus on the center of your being, your core area from the heart to the belly button, that whole area of wisdom, of knowing, absorbing the truth, and breathe. Now in this moment, I close my eyes and listen within. My hands are still. I surrender to your omnipotence, O oh Lord. Of myself, I can do nothing. If I had known what to do, I would have done it. If I had known where to go or what to say or how to be, I would have fulfilled your word. But now, I simply wait, happily powerless. Is this the divine commission? Mm. To accept that I am not the doer, you are. I am not the power, you are the power. I thought I knew how to make things happen. I am used to being the one in authority. I am a woman of means. And yet, now I can only go where you call me. I am a vessel to a holy purpose. And so now I wait in the darkness before dawn. I listen, I watch, all is still. If I am to do nothing, then I surrender. Take charge, Master. I, of myself, 
can do nothing. But wait, what is that voice that speaks my name so soft and close and sends me forth to tell the others, Rabboni, my teacher, my beloved, alive. Now I am filled with divine energy. Here I am, Lord, send me. I am the power of spirit, your spirit. Take that in deeply and in the quiet, listen with your inner ears, observe and feel, sense to what spirit is bringing to you as you observe and feel the quiet. As you continue to enjoy this peace, this knowing, this understanding of the power of God's presence here in this space, feel joy, bliss, bring your attention to the center forehead area and imagine the color gold, bright and shiny, untarnished, radiant. Allow that energy to open broadly, that inner vision. Invite spirit to be with you throughout this day and week, opening broader and broader that inner vision of understanding. Be mindful of each and every experience you have on this day and the days to follow, but opening broadly your power of understanding. You will see things in a new light and a new way. Your heart will be soothed, your body released, your energy restored, and joy bubbling, bubbling over. As we bring ourselves back to this space and time, let us do so with a new zest for our journey. We are not alone. 
joy in our heart and soul, a releasing everything and allowing, allowing God. To thank you, God. Thank you for this reminder of the power you pour through us, for the reminders constantly of your great and glorious love. Thank you, God, for the privilege of serving you, loving you, of being you in this space and time. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Oh, gust. Oh, I'm a gust today. I feel like a gust. A gust of wind. <laughs> I love it. There are no mistakes. Happy accidents. It is a joy when we, when we find a path like unity and we start learning more and more and more about our lives, these interesting coincidences, a new way to journey through even the challenges and the joys, it becomes a dance. It becomes a, a relief and a release from all that we've been taught to think and believe. And we've been looking at the Beatitudes over the summer and those wonderful teachings of Jesus that are so much deeper than we think when we just read through the scripture because they don't make a lot of sense in our American language, but when we look at the Aramaic meaning, what Jesus was actually saying and teaching and showing, they're extraordinarily powerful. Rocco Erico calls them the levels of bliss because when we activate them, when we do as Jesus explained and expressed, we reach a plateau that is beyond this earthly ego. These joy and bliss molecules are activated in us, which we know now that actually happens. He knew of what he was speaking. These anandamides <laughs> start flowing. There's ways to activate these. And he gave us the key. And understanding the language helps us understand how we can use that in our life and further deepen this experience. And every experience that we have becomes a moment of grace and a powerful experience of God. And the more we open to that, the more of those experiences we have. I look at Peter, he has them all the time because he texts me and tells me about them as they're happening. I love that. Tebutha is the beatitude today. We've talked about the others, the Blissful are the poor of spirit, which has nothing to do with being poor in spirit. It's more about letting go of the piety. When you pray, go into the private space of your heart. It's not something to grandstand about. Life is not about that. It's about this intimate relationship with to whom you belong. They that mourn will be comforted. The meek shall inherit the earth. We've talked about all of that, those who hunger and thirst. Today is an extraordinarily powerful one. I, this is a superpower to me in my experience. This is a superpower, and it's easy to activate. That's why I call it super, because <laughs> we can all activate. But it, it, it allows you, as Jesus intended, the kingdom of heaven is here right now, and this is how we enter it. It's a different state of consciousness. That, would, that is what he was explaining. Henry David Thoreau said it beautifully in that beautiful essay he wrote, The Pond. Heaven is beneath our feet as well as above us and everywhere around us. He understood what Jesus was talking about, and this is how we enter it, and this is how we stay there. And these beatitudes are levels of consciousness that keep us in a sustained ecstasy or bliss. 
And that's what being in the heaven is like. We've all had those glimpses. And it's like when we try to grab it, it, it it's elusive. It's like, anything, it's like water. It's so refreshing and you try to grab it and it slips through. But the more that we allow ourselves to get into that space, the more permanent they become. And you've seen those that are just in a constant state of grace or bliss. It's as if they're just floating above the things of the world. Blissful or the compassionate is what it translates to, the Aramaic phrase. In the American Bibles, it's Blessed are those that are merciful. But this distorts it completely. Having mercy is not having compassion. It's not the same thing. Tenutha, tenutha, tebutha is, um, it's a verb. And it does not mean mercy. It means deep, active compassion. It goes beyond tolerance. Mercy to me is tolerance. Have mercy on them. Uh, that's tolerance. It's allowing them sustained life around us. That's mercy to me. But compassion is different. Having compassion for someone is active love. It's active love. And when you go to that place, you understand what he's talking about because the bliss bombs are fired off. <laughs> you will experience a different space. Blissful are the compassionate, the loving kindness that they show others. It's active. It's constant. And because of that, the kingdom of heaven is strengthened and multiplied in their souls. When we are allowing that compassion to flow through us, which is God's, it activates more and more. And we become that verb. We become that verb. It's really hard to put English words on these because they're more feelings. This compassion is active love. And it looks different than it sounds, you know? I want to give you an experience. I've shared this before with some of you. Going to that level, and I didn't even realize I was. Um, it's God's love expressed through you to another fully expressed as if you are not there. And unless you've done it, you don't really know. It's, it's with everything. Unless we experience it ourselves, it doesn't become our own conviction. We don't know it. That's why I love unity, because it gives us these exercises, these tools, these practices to experience it ourselves. So then we know, and it becomes part of who we are, becomes our manifesto, our own personal credo. But when we are truly compassionate out of our own way for the good and only good of another, something ignites in us and quantum flips us <laughs> to another level, which I believe is the kingdom of heaven. And it is a sustained space. And uh, many years ago, I was just dabbling in unity and other spiritual practices, and I was having a lot of fun in it because I was beginning to realize there's another way to maneuver around on the earth. <laughs> through these spiritual ways. And, and at the time, my summers, I was working at the canning center in Citrus County. They have an old, some of the Florida counties have these old-fashioned canning centers where farmers can come and all the ladies are shaking their head, remember canning? And they were going to shut it down. And being the Mormon that I am, raised to can, I'm like, don't shut that down. That's where we all go to can. And so they said, OK, run it. And I'm like, all right, let me use it, and I'll run it. So I would do that in the summers. I did that for four or five years. And it was an exquisite experiment for me. The cannery was in an old schoolhouse, about 120 years old. You know where it is, Bruce, don't you? The canning center in Citrus County. It's an old schoolhouse with those great big tall windows, no air conditioning, mega tall roofs. That, and you'd, with this heavy ro um, rope, you'd open those windows so the air could circulate. That was your air conditioning. And I would leave as the sun was coming up so I could get there early, because those farmers with their bucket loads of tomatoes get there bright and early, and I wanted to be ready for them each morning. I drove the same route, 44, out to 491, took a ride on 491. So this was before Walmart was out there. This was all cow fields and cow patties. Citrus Hills was just glimmering. It wasn't even Terra Vista and all that. And it was, it was a beautiful ride because it was, you know, just quiet early morning. Same ride every morning, four years. And this one morning, and I'm driving out there, I notice what looked to be a woman on the side of the road. There was no sidewalk at the time. It was just the gravel and that. And it was real hazy. The sun was just coming up. And I could only really see her 
silhouette, but I could tell she was a woman. And just the way she was carrying herself, I could tell she was disheveled, probably homeless. But I wasn't sure. I'd never seen her there on that highway before. And I, I could tell she had a brown skirt and a pink sweater and kind of messy, blondish hair. Um, and, and I could see her in my rearview mirror as I passed her. And I couldn't stop thinking about her. She just really took up space in my heart all morning. And I thought, I need to do something for her. I don't know what, but I just need to, I hope I see her again. And then as the morning went on, I thought more and more things. You know, my mind has this active imagination. I'm thinking, I'm going to go get her something that will make her life a little easier. I'll go get her some groceries. or I'll go. So my mind's just filled with all of this. I couldn't wait to get the tomatoes on and get everything cooling off so I could take my lunch break and go to the grocery store. I thought, what are the odds of even seeing her again? It's been hours. But I'm going to do it. I'm already on this track. Maybe I'll run into someone else later in the day, like whatever. So I went to Winn-Dixie in Beverly Hills. Oh, I think it was Piggly Wiggly at the time. I don't think it was Win Dixie. Yet. And I, I, I went through the store, and I was, so, I was getting so excited about this. I, I found some, some fruits, some fresh fruits that would be. I didn't want the bag to be too heavy if she's walking around with it. I found some water, non-perishable food items. I, I found a, a grooming kit, a little travel kit that had a brush and little wipets and things. And I'm getting so excited. I'm just, I can't wait to see her. I hope she's okay. And I'm. And so I came back by the canning center and um, drove through the intersection, and there's nobody there at all. I went both ways up and down. There was one Circle K on that corner, and I went inside, and I said, have you seen this woman? She looked homeless, brown. And, no, I've never seen her before. I've been here 20 years. No, no, no homeless people around here. I'm like, so I went around the shop, and I thought, oh, I was really disappointed. Anyway, I thought, I'll go back to the canning center, and I took a left. And as I'm turning down the street to the canning center, I looked in my rearview mirror, and there she was behind me towards the jail, the Bonds place. I flipped the car around. I couldn't believe it, and I, I knew that was her. And I drove through the light, and there was a driveway at the Bonds, bail, Bailman's, you know, one of those people that help you when you're in trouble, <laughs> I guess. And I pulled in that driveway, and she was approaching me, and I, I started to roll my window down, and so she was coming, and I'm getting all of the groceries, and I'm so excited. And I went to hand them to her. I'll never forget this moment in my life. Never. <sighs> I turned around. She grabbed my hand. Standing in front of me was Jesus. I was shaking because I couldn't believe it. This extraordinarily beautiful soul, dark, bronze skin, tall, statuesque, magnificent, beautiful, radiant, glorious smile, these deep, penetrating eyes just looked through me. We had such a moment of grace, I couldn't, I thought I was, I thought I was in a, I didn't know, I, there were no words for it. I just kept shaking, and he, she, just held my hands and steadied me. It was as if we were in a storm. I can't, it was so surreal, and I, just, I was just weeping. And he just turned and went through the trees and was gone. And I, I'm just, I couldn't figure out what was going on with me. I couldn't, I thought, what just happened? That was so extraordinary, and I was reading um, about how the moments we think we're gifting someone are actually gifts for us. I recognized that in that moment, that was not about me gifting to her. That had nothing to do with <laughs> me being a good soul. <laughs> uh, that was for me. That was a gift to me, and I didn't really know the full impact until I got a little older and started going a little deeper of what I had really experienced. And, and especially with this work that I'm doing with the Beatitudes, because I allowed myself to go so far out of my own care in an almost obsession-like experience to help another, I entered another state of consciousness. I simply slipped into a different state of consciousness. I've been there again since, but that was the, r the first real woe. For those of you that have experienced this, for those of you that, without drugs or alcohol, <laughs> without, I mean, with just a moment of pure, sheer grace, I, I didn't really f 
know the impact in, until some of the years went on and, and really uh, recognized what an extraordinary gift and that it's available to everybody. It's not something that I necessarily did. It was something I allowed. It's already there. How are we perceiving it? And I've studied it and written it down. What, how can I recreate? And it's right here. These directions are so simple. Jesus would, when he saw the multitudes, you read this in, in all of the Gospels, the scriptures, they would, his disciples would watch. When the multitudes would appear, he would go away. He would either go to an olive grove, a place of pure peace and wisdom, or the mountains, a place of heightened consciousness. And this one particular, for this particular beatitude, he went to the mountains when the crowd gathered and stayed until he was set. That's the Aramaic word. Until he was set and then returned to the crowds. Ah! I mean, it shows how human he is, for one thing, but he went to access it. He went to get into that space to not be himself, even though he was the example. He went to become set, set and steeped in the presence of God. That's so beautiful. That's what going out of your way to be there for another, that's why they gathered around him by the multitudes. That's why they could feel he was not anywhere else but right here for you. He met them right where they were. And he knew without a shadow of a doubt he would have everything he needed at the time he needed in the place he was in in the time he had. That's so profound to me. That's why this particular beatitude is a superpower because you will feel it immediately. When you get out of your way for another human being or another animal or another experience that you know this is mine to do. We all get that, but usually we go, oh, I'm too busy. Oh, that's going to take energy. Oh, I'm not smart enough. I'm not ready enough. I'm not spiritual enough. No, <laughs> it's hitting you because it's your time. How often do we walk over that opportunity to be one with God? How often do we trip over it? It's not mine to do. Or being so full of the things of the world and all that. But we miss those moments of pure grace that put us directly in the kingdom. And the more often we do that, the more of the kingdom we experience. And the more and the more and, the, and, and pretty soon it becomes our way of life. Isn't that wonderful that we have access to that? It's right here. It's right now. So, you all know what our assignment is. No, you don't have to run a canning center and go get groceries. But if you want to, go ahead. It's quite an experience. I got a million... <laughs> experiences at that place. Random acts of compassion. Compassion is different than kindness. You know? Right? Compassion is different than kindness. I love random acts of kindness. They're fun. It's like a game. How many can we do today? Random acts of compassion is different. It reaches a different level of you. It opens a different space in you. And there's one thing about having compassion for someone while you're speaking about it but it's different when you're activating it. It is a verb. And the way to do this, the way to access this particular bliss bomb is to meet people where they are. And it requires you to slow down. The Unity people do this really well, by the way. It requires you to slow down and listen because God will speak through that person and you will know what they need before you rush off and buy all the groceries and make the appointments, and that's fine too. That person was acting in compassion for me. <laughs> I thought I was doing the work <laughs> you're having because you've done it too. I thought it was about me. That person was there for me, meeting me where I was. In my understanding, they showed me who they really are, and it blew me away. Meeting people where they are. And just hearing that today, you're going to experience someone or something, an experience that's not going to be what you expected because our brains already go to, and that's the ego, to that person, oh, okay, I know who I'm going to help. I know, you know, you're already putting your feelers out there. 
Let it come through. <laughs> Let it come through you. Let it surprise you. Don't overthink it. Because something will cross your path that will cause you to go, oh. And there will be things, little ping pongs going off and you going, oh, what's this about? Meet it right where it is with an open heart. And you'll know what is yours to do. And you might be very surprised that very person that you intended to bless has an even bigger blessing for you that you never saw coming and will never forget. Pretty great, huh? And I want to hear your examples this week of where you had the courage and the time to extend compassion at this level actively. And what happened? And it doesn't have to be a grand gesture. It seldom is. Like Mother Teresa reminded us, we don't go out and do great things. We do little small things with great love, with great compassion. Even just being still with someone brings everything to a new space. Mm -hmm. We can do that, yes? There's a beautiful quote in here from Rocco Erica. Today we have plenty, but no one knows what tomorrow has in store for us. For the hand that gives help to others may one day also be in need of aid. No one can just live to oneself alone, and no one can feel totally assured of being independent of others. We live in a world community. We live in a world community. And I'll end this part of our lesson with Shalyn Harkin. This is for all of you because people are going to ask you this question. If they haven't already, being in unity, you get asked this a lot. Whee! <laughs> oh, what are all these little love notes from God? The things I'm supposed to do. Oh, I don't want those. No to-do list today. Why are you so happy? Do you get asked that in unity? I did <laughs> Why are you so happy? Sometimes they say it grumpy, grumpily. Why are you so happy? <laughs> why are you so happy? Someone asked me. Why am I so happy? Darling, why are you so drab? <laughs> Birds just threw themselves into the sky like a handful of winged seeds to go pollinate the south with music. Each evening, the sun creates a symphony of color and your heart matches it. I've got two hands that can hold your soft face and magical eyes with black holes in the middle of them that spend their whole lives pulling in light and beauty. Because even the winter snag in shimmering is shimmering with sweet promise, and I can see a hint of its fruits. Because every bucket of your darkness is alchemized into wisdom simply by handing it to the light. When we were born, God gave us an automatically refillable bag of jewels called a soul that we can share with any living thing to make it sparkle and sing. Darling, why am I so happy? Simply because today I am choosing to remember all of that. Namaste. Remember all of that. Oh, yes. Nice song. We are the world. We are the children.
Will the ushers come forward, please? That song sunk in a little, a little deeper this time around. I don't know why, Reverend Laurie, <laughs> but it did. Yeah. Together, we'll dedicate our tithes and offerings. Divine love flowing in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I am grateful. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel God's mighty power and God's grace. There's a holy hush around us. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely Our prayer box, everybody's, Our, the ch belongs to the church, so it belongs to us. Put your prayers in here, prayers of gratitude, of prayer, of, of need, of compassion, if that's something that's on your heart right now. And we now, right now, all of us, we bless these prayers from our heart. Dear Lord, we Unity Vocala bless these prayers going out now that they may <coughs> work towards the blessings that you give all coming together in the right and perfect place and time for those in need and those who need blessing. Amen. No children. No children today, it's just us. Well, we'll move on today. So we make it special when, it, when we do it. Today's chaplain is Jim Reed. Thank you, Jim. If, if after the service you are in want or need of prayer, please see Jim, he'll be at the front. Or anybody else with the blue and purple stoles, there are chaplains, there are team who take our prayers after we bless them and, and pray over them for 30 days. And they go to silent unity after that for another 30 days. I know it's, it's, just, it's just, just the fam today but it's important to, to say that over and over, to instill the energy of the process of prayer, affirmation, putting our hearts where the prayers need to go. I say that over and over, 30 days here with our chaplain team, praying over them and 30 days to silent unity, but it bears mention, it bears mention because of the power instilled in all of those hearts and prayers. I think we have one visitor here today who has not been here before. Mary, have you been here before? Mm -hmm. Oh, you have, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't. I've been I, here, this is my third time. 
Oh, really? I'm sorry. I've never met you before. I met, met you this morning. It's okay. You are blessed lady lady. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. Thanks. You, yeah, you, we're, we're, we're blessed. Let's, bless, uh, let's everybody bless everybody together. We love you. We bless you. We behold the Christ in you. We love you. We bless you. We behold the Christ in you. We love you, we bless you, we behold the Christ in you. Thanks, everybody. What a beautiful day this has been. Announcements. Please stick around after the service and grab a snack. We have a lovely, and have, and have a lovely beverage. <laughs> and join us here in the sanctuary at 1115 for conversations today. We'll, we'll gather again after we all do our fellowship. And fellowship is one of the things that we do best. It is. The Gathering Circle meets every Wednesday at 12.30 to 2 o'clock. We are all, all here are welcome to attend that lovely gathering in circle and sharing. Let's see, are there any other announcements today? Anybody? Jim. Yes, just want to uh, remind everyone that the, the chaplains each month uh, make contact calls uh, to each of our members. And we have several uh, members listed with no phone numbers uh, or address. So we have a pad back here on the, the back table. If uh, you could uh, please write down your, your name, phone number, and address. Uh, we would really appreciate it so that our cha chaplains can do their job and make you feel better when they do. Thank you. Yes, Debbie. Heidi has an announcement. Thank you, I do. <laughs> <laughs> the Gathering Circle will be meeting Wednesday for brunch before the meeting. So between 10 and 10.30. Thank you, Bill. We will meet at BD Beans to have brunch and socialize <laughs> together. We'll see you then. And Beauty Beans is in Bellevue bed, Debbie. You know that. Right next to Giant Circle K. Does anybody else have anything for the good of the church? Peter. God is great, and I'm glad I'm here. Wee, 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 ha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, I, I, I would second that notion. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. Second that emotion, yeah. <laughs> if there's nothing else further, we'll go ahead and wind up this wonderful service with the, our prayer for protection. Please stand if you're comfortable doing so. The light, the light of, of God, God surrounds, surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well.